My name is Holger Hoff. I'm with Stockholm Environment Institute. After the first mini panels, we have a third mini panel here on science. Obviously, science is not something completely different from the other mini panels, that's quite clear. But we would like to make a distinct point about the inputs that science can provide to the nexus. Um, we have um, many colleagues for just half an hour, so we'll be very brief. We'll just give you glimpses of what, what we think is useful in this nexus discussion context. Building blocks from science, data, quantifications of trade-offs, of synergies, some tools that could be useful. We do it by way of um, one example, not surprising, in a water context, we use a basin case. There were other mentioned before, where we want to show the complexity involved, but also ways of dealing with this complexity. A basin that's also called a closed basin, at least from a, from a water perspective, debatable whether this is true from the other perspectives. And we go across scales. The case we're using is um, the Blue Nile going into the Full Nile, where we show you from upstream to downstream the nexus interlinkages and also the interlinkages across water, land, food, and energy. I would start by introducing the theme, and then my colleagues will provide other little building blocks. It's Just to be clear, we don't have a cooperative effort, not a joint project. We are showing you how building blocks can feed in, and in the end, um, our colleague from the Nile Basin Discourse will wrap up by, by explaining how this um, science can be uptaken and can, can support decision making. Um, challenges and opportunities, that's what we're talking about all the time. Just a very few brief initial, initial comments about the basin itself, which is very diverse in social economy and climate and many factors, well endowed resource-wise, but also at risk of resource degradation quite severely. Um, there's not much irrigation yet, it's changing. Um, productivity of resources is not very high. And there is a food deficiency in many parts of the basin with, um, to, be, to be growing further with a rapid population growth. Little access to energy, that was mentioned before that there's a projection of rapid increase of electricity production. However, the Potential is not really tapped yet. There's a, a lot of hydropower potential, for example, which comes with large evaporative losses as one of the um, challenges. We have issues in the very upper part of the Lake Tana management of the lake, which comes with um, opportunities and trade-offs in terms of wetlands and ecosystem services, floodplains of aquatic ecosystems. And we're attempting to align our nexus research also with ongoing development plans. We're looking for entry points of actual plans and strategies where to feed in the nexus thinking. And we do believe, and that will be explained later, in regional cooperation within the basin in terms of um, power trading, in terms of food trading, and so on. The basin is very diverse, I said. If you just look at the full basin in terms of precipitation, in terms of water productivity, this is economic productivity, there's almost a factor of 10 between different parts of the basin, the upper Blue Nile and, and the lower basin. If you look at it in terms of um, water productivity and food production, you see huge differences between, say, for example, Ethiopia and Egypt and how many kilocalories are grown out of each cubic meter of water invested, so to speak. So there's a lot of potential for closing the yield gap and for increasing productivity. I just put Sweden there to show how far, in principle, water productivity can go, although that's under different climate, I should say. We start from the top, from the Blue Nile. We're using one of the SEI tools called WEEP, where we assess challenges and opportunities. We've done it at a very small scale. Colleagues of us have done it also in, in CEF, for example, in IMI. They have looked at um, small scale versus large scale storage options in the lake. They have looked at the environmental effects of lake management. And um, we have started to quantify these trade-offs and opportunities to feed into the policymaking process. Um, no need to look in detail, just to, to give you an, an idea of the way we try to look at these trade-offs. This is results from, from the WEEP model, where we look at outputs such as food production, just, just such as energy production, lake level management, and downstream flows towards Sudan in that case, resulting from various interventions such as water transfers through new development corridors and hydropower schemes, in, increasing irrigation, increasing um, Soil and water conservation measures, on the other hand, they all come with certain costs and benefits that we start comparing and we start quantifying. We also um, see here that um, the issue of foreign direct investment comes in with intensification of 
irrigation and of production. And we find um, regime shifts in the lake itself. Um, that's something that you can test with these scenario tools, whether the lake changes into a different state, into a different lake level, which is also a stable one, if, um, if the development proceeds the way it's foreseen.